growing up in a tiny little village top Appalachian town in the hills of Kentucky, where there was only about a hundred people, had to have been hard. My granddaddy told me all kinds of stories about how it was for him. This is a story he told me a lot when I was little, about a little old woman that lived just outside of that town in a run-down shack of a house. She was poorer than everybody in that town, but had the biggest heart made of pure solid gold. Her name was Miss Daisy Jane, and this is the story he always told me. My granddaddy said that when he was just a whip of a youngin, he'd run all over that little village town, playing and having a big old time with four or five other youngins that lived there. Said they wasn't but about five or six at the time, and so they was too little to do big chores on the farms. They'd get up early and fetch eggs and help haul small pots of water, for, but for the most part, they was just in the way and was made to go out and play. He said on this one particular day, something happened that he'll never forget. He said him and the other youngest was playing out by the creek and having a big old time, climbing up on top of boulders, jumping from rock to rock. Well, so they's jumping across the big old gap. When it came his turn, he didn't quite make it. Now, this scared him for three reasons. One, because they wasn't supposed to be there. Two, because he ripped his britches. And three, because he fell down there where there was a whole mess of snakes quiled up. Now, him being little, he couldn't tell what they was, and it didn't matter anyway, because he scared plumb to death. And it didn't help none that his foot was stuck. Said he hollered for them other youngins to come help him, but they had gotten scared and run off. So him being little, scared, he started crying, hollering for somebody to please come and help him. He said he felt like he was there for days, and he knew it had been a while anyhow because the sun had moved overhead and was going down the other side. Well, him knowing that dark would come soon, he started into wiggling and hollering even louder, making noise and everything, and made them made one of the most snakes mad. And he felt it strike him right in on his ankle. Well, that made things worse for him, and he screamed louder. At the same time, it, he didn't know it, but Miss Daisy had brought her old mare Bunny down to that creek with her little wagon to haul her some water back to her little cabin. Her and Bunny both heard him squalling, begging for help. She pulled old Bunny over to the back side of that big rock, climbed on up and over on top of it, and looked down. He says she told his mama later on that all she could see was his little head hair, two little hands reaching up, begging her to get him out of there. Well, she started praying for strength, tied Bunny's lead around her waist, and slid down as far as she could go. Grabbed hold of him and hollered, head on, Bunny. Bunny went to walk and she's able to pull him free. So when they got up on top of that old rock, he was a hanging on to her for dear life, crying, thanking her for getting him. He said she started petting him and checking him over. And that was when he told her that a snake had struck his foot. He said she told him, all righty, just hang on. We need to get on down off in this here rock and so as I can take a gander at it and then just hang on. He says she stood up and with a strength that he didn't know she had, picked him up and hopped off the top of that rock and laid him on the back of that wagon. She went around and picked his foot up and looked at it. And he said he's a, 
He has all kinds of colors. Swelled up so big, couldn't move it. And it just felt all wrong. She said, now, youngin, lay on back there and let me work on it. And we'll have you fixed up and home shortly. He says she's a praying, and right when she started to suck the venom out of his foot, Plum passed out. He said he woke up later sometime and was in a bundle in the back of that old wagon. And they's pulling up in front of his house. And it's dark. His mom and daddy come flying out that front door and said Miss Daisy Jane went on to tell him what had happened. Now, granddaddy said he's sure glad to be home, but now he's dreaded the whooping he's going to get for being somewhere he weren't supposed to be. He said he tightened up getting ready for it, but what happened was his daddy ran over, picked him up, and just hugged him, and then scolded him, and then hugged him some more for being out that way, but that he was just glad that he was okay. He said his mama was a-crying and thanking Miss Daisy Jane for helping him. She told him that he had a snake bite and that his ankle was probably broke too and that they may want to take him on in town to the doctor just to make sure she had set it back right. She had sucked the venom out and put a poultice on it, set the ankle with sticks and pieces of her skirt while he'd been passed out. Mom and Daddy tried everything in the world to get her to accept a payment for saving and fixing him. But she refused and said that it was what the Lord wanted her to do. And that he had guided her in doing it. And that her reward was that he was okay and home. She hopped up on her wagon, said goodnight, and left. Granddaddy said he was scolded some, but that was about it, and said them young as that left him there got a whole lot worse punishment for leaving him not telling nobody where he's at and he said he didn't want to play with them no more after that neither he did say that when his ankle was healed though he gathered up some eggs a little bit of milk some cake his mama made put it all in a basket and after telling his mom and daddy where he was a going took the stuff on out to miss daisy jane's house Said before he even got to that front door, she was standing there with a big old smile on her face. He took the stuff up to her, gave her a big old hug, and thanked her for saving and helping him. And she wanted to refuse the things that he had took out there to her, but he begged her, please to keep it. Not as a payment, but as a gift of thanks and friendship. And told her to hook up her wagon, because his mom and daddy had invited her for Sunday supper that night. So she said, only if you let me bring some fresh made sun tea, share with the family. He said, all right, and off they went. Granddaddy said that after that, Miss Daisy Jane was like a part of the family. All the way up till she passed on a couple of years later, Miss Daisy Jane was already 92 years old when she saved him. So it was her time to go. But he will never, ever forget the amazing strength, courage Miss Daisy Jane showed him when she saved his life. I miss my granddaddy's stories. He had so many, but this is one of my favorites. I'm 59 years old now, so he's been gone a long time. I tell his stories to my own grandkids now, and also wanted to share it with you. Thank you for the opportunity to do so. God bless you and your family. Philip Farmer. Now I want to thank Mr. Philip Farmer for sending in that amazing story about the wonderful woman, Daisy Jane. That sounded like one mighty adventure. If y'all like this story, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Share it out. And leave a comment afterwards. Let me know what you thought about it. If you haven't already, also think about becoming a member. Here's a thank you page for all the current members I have now. Now remember folks, be the sunshine in somebody's day. Because you never know who's going to need it. I love y'all. 
God bless. And I'll talk to you later.